Hello, my name is Justin Roberts. I'll be doing a presentation on servant leadership for the Masters in Coaching and Athletic Administration program at uh, Concordia University of Irvine. So we'll first get into the definitions as defined by uh, some of the texts in our course. Um, Lumpkin, Stoll, and Beller put it uh, this way. Servant leadership is deeply personal and expresses a genuine compassion for other human beings. This, is, this means we are others-centered. Uh, we are not worried about um, only us. We are trying to make our company grow, our organization grow, our team grow, whatever it may be, but we have to help those individuals around us uh, to grow, and we have to serve them in order to do that. Uh, John Maxwell, another one of our texts, uh, Ethics 101, uh, states, true leadership must be for the benefit of the followers, followers and not the leader. Um, very simply, again, um, this is being others-centered, helping those around us um, grow, uh, serving those that are under our purview, per se. Uh, servant leadership explained by Bruce Brown, um, an impressive career in, in his himself and always fun to listen to. Bruce Brown uh, states, ethical athletic leaders are able to instill respect and responsibility in their individual athletes and teams by providing a model and inspiring those around them to reach higher than they thought possible. And we'll get in, get in a little deeper about modeling um, in itself. Uh, that is an, an extremely important uh, aspect of, of servant leadership is, is being a great model uh, for those around us. So let's get into some examples. Um, how can you not start with Jesus Christ? Uh, the most impressive servant leader that we have seen um, and most impressive, or I should say influential servant leader that we have ever seen and, and had the privilege of following. Um, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Um, and then he set uh, an incredible example for many coaches and athletic administrators, um, among others, to follow. Uh, another great example, Martin Luther King Jr., um, extremely influential, uh, modeled modeled uh, servant leadership very well for all of us. Um, he stated, uh, a genuine leader is not a researcher for consensus, but a molder of consensus, which means he had the ability to listen and bring people together. Uh, Martin Luther King um, teaches us that listening um, brings people together in discourse and then also that working together is more efficient in accomplishing something special. Uh, in the world of education and education-based athletics, how can you not start with John Wooden um, in this world, um, my world um, that I live in? Um, he states, a, leader, a leader's most powerful ally is his or her, her own example. Um, as mentioned earlier uh, with Bruce Brown, modeling, modeling in it of itself, is also serving those around you as long as you are modeling uh, that true and great character. Um, Wooden also states all too often, the only picture of Christ most of these people will ever see is your face. This world needs more godly role models. And although in the examples we started with Jesus Christ, um, we do live in a secular world and, and myself working in public education, a lot of the times um, we may not be able to preach um, exactly uh, the word, however, we can live it, and we can we can witness for the word be, the way we act, um, acting ethically, and and modeling an incredible character. Um, John Wooden also states that uh, being a role model is the most powerful form of educating. We know John Wooden liked to call himself a teacher um, rather than a coach. Um, obviously, he was both, and he was incredible. Um, no matter the title you gave him, teacher or coach. Um, he was incredible at what he did. But point of emphasis in that, um, again, that I'm going to continue to say, we are serving others by modeling great character. And let's come to more present day. Uh, John Harbaugh is the head football coach at uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, and this is what he says on servant leadership. The leadership is a, is a big proposition, but it's a pretty simple idea, right? Uh, do whatever you can to help others be their best and see where that takes you. You know, and it really shouldn't be about where it takes you. It's where it takes us. 
You know, what do we have a chance to accomplish together? Can we build something together that is special and has a chance to last? Can we make it about something bigger than just maybe the bottom line even, although we have to win games. And we tell our guys all the time, you know, we have to, our, our mission is to win the next game. Our mission is to build a dynasty. You know, I think that's business and sports and whatever, you have a mission. But within that, maybe the broader mission is, you know, how we are around one another. And if we can help each other accomplish what we all need to accomplish together, we have a chance to be great. And I love that talk is that in the world of athletics, we can still strive to compete. We can still strive to win. Um, but we can also be other centered and, and build our organization by serving those around us. Um, and here comes a, uh, a tough question. How do you lead from the middle? Do you have to be at the top? And the question is, is it, is it more your rank or your actions? The question is, is it more your position versus your influence? And, and the truth is, leadership leadership isn't about the position you're in. It's about how much influence you have on over others. Um, again, modeling, serving, being other-centered, working together, bringing people together. Um, that's where true servant leadership is. It is not about your position or rank. And... Uh, Leadership expert Simon Sinek uh, puts it this way um, about leading from the middle. To do with rank, right? I know many people who sit at the highest levels of organizations who are not leaders. We do as they tell us because they have authority over us, but we would never choose to follow them. And yet I know many people with no formal rank and no formal authority who've made the choice to look out to the person to the left of them and made the choice to look out to the person to the right of them and we would follow them anywhere. We call you leader, not because you're at the top. We call you leader because you went first, because you took the risk to head towards the danger. You took the risk to express uncertainty. You took the risk to ask for help. That's why you earn the rank of leader, because you literally led by the behavior. You led by example. When this person says, my leader is not taking care of our team, I get that. The question is, who's taking care of the team? You can be the leader you wish you had. It does not require rank or authority to pick up the phone and say, how are you? And it can come from anywhere inside the organization where one person may take responsibility to take care of the mental health of everybody. Congratulations, you are a leader. I love the direct approach and intense approach to leadership. Uh, it gives me the chills. Uh, and we, we can't go without talking about the negative impact of poor or self-serving leadership. Um, one of my favorite uh, daily reads um, in it. Ernest Boyer says, a poor surgeon hurts one person at a time while a poor teacher hurts 30. Um, just the negative impact that poor leadership, and we've all felt it. Um, so it, it only adds to how important or how influential uh, positive and servant leadership can be for uh, an organization or a team or a school, um, whatever it may be. And to get into athletics, we have one of the greatest platforms. And Joe Ehrman states in one of his TED Talks, uh, sports will engage more individuals, more families, more communities in a shared activity than any cultural activity, organization, or religion in America. We have the platform as coaches and athletic administrators. We have it to truly serve um, just so many people and sometimes a lot of people in need. Uh, and... In conclusion, these are some of my thoughts and key principles of servant leadership. We have to choose to listen. We have to choose to have empathy. It is not an easy task, and it takes practice to have empathy. We have to be genuine, uh, which is also takes transparency. Um, we have to be aware of those around us. We have to have the ability to ask people and, and have those relationships to be aware of who um, may need help or who may need somebody to lead them in the right direction. We have to have the ability of positive persuasion. Um, we have to be able to have a vision and share that vision. And we need to act ethically um, because we won't be followed, and nor should we be followed um, if we are not acting ethically. And then finally, the willingness to commit to the growth of others and to be others-centered. Uh, we could build something special with that attitude. A quick run by on the references. And I would like to thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end here. And I hope you uh, uh, enjoy and uh, grow in your area of servant leadership.